Hey guys, how's it going? Yuri here. Um, so today we're going to be doing a FAQ Friday video. I apologize for not uh, being more consistent with my videos over the last couple of months. I've just been crazy busy with a uh, ton of stuff with different launches and different product re-releases. So now I'm kind of back, kind of settled down a little bit. So I'm going to get into the, the weekly habit of uh, providing you some awesome videos, starting with this one. So in this video, we're going to look at three questions, uh, more nutrition based today. The first one has to do with uh, with coconut water, and this is from Lisa. I'm just looking at my screen here, it's just a different kind of points if, if my eyes drift, so you'll know where I'm going. So I'm just reading the question here. So Lisa wants to know, there are so many brands of coconut water. I'm sure they vary greatly in purity and quality. Which brand do you use? Thank you. Well, uh, coconut water is great. There's three main brands out there. There's um, Vita Coco, One, and Zico. Those are the three brands that are probably most common uh, in, in the grocery stores that I've been to at least. Now what's interesting is that there's been some recent research done on these three different coconut waters by ConsumerLab.com, which is an independent research laboratory that tests different nutrition products. And what was found is that, uh, I'll just actually, I'm going to pull up the study here for you. And what was interesting is that both uh, One and Vitacoco did not pass their approval uh, based on the testing that was done at Consumer Lab. Uh, so Zico did, but that was kind of the only one of the three that did pass the approval. And basically the reason that they didn't pass their approval here is because they were claiming um, a certain amount of electrolytes. For instance, uh, just let me give you the, the specifics here. If I can find it. Uh... So uh, as an example, one coconut water uh, provided only 11 milligrams of sodium, which is less than the 60 milligrams it promises on the food on the label itself. So it also came up short of magnesium, um, and it, you know. So is that the end of the world? Probably not. Uh, they're obviously being revised. These food labels are being revised um, as of as of this video. So I, I would assume they would change uh, within the next short period of time. But uh, so one Zico, same idea, basically not not including what was promised on the, on the label inside the actual water itself. So that's the main concern of the coconuts, uh, coconut waters. Um, it doesn't really matter. Honestly, I've used all three of them. They're all just as good as one another as far as I'm concerned. You know, whether you're not getting the uh, enough electrolytes from one, you know, it's, I don't know if that's really the, the make or break decision. What I do find is a make or break decision is the cost of some of them. Uh, recently, I was in our, our grocery store here and noticed that one box, so one one liter box of coconut water was seven dollars. Seven dollars. I was like, there's no way I'm spending seven dollars on a liter of coconut water that's going to go into my smoothie and just be gone. So uh, it really depends on where you live, what time of year. Uh, some of them, I'm not too sure what the price difference is between the, the three of them, although a Zico does tend to be the more expensive, basically at two dollars and fifty cents per serving. Uh, so it's a little bit more expensive than, than the other two. Nonetheless, all three are really good. Uh, if you're, you know, if you want to spend the money, that really depends. I mean, they're not all seven dollars. I've seen them from like three ninety nine up to seven dollars, so it really depends. Uh, but hopefully that answers the question. So, which one do I recommend? I personally use one because that's the one I have access to. Um, even considering the fact that it's, you know, doesn't have as much sodium as it says on the on the label itself, it doesn't really matter too much for me. Um, but that's, you know, I'm just putting it out there. So hopefully that answers that question. Uh, the second question we're we'll talking about is, uh, is from Julie, and she wants to know, hey, Yuri, I just purchased the Total Wellness Cleanse last week, and I was intending to start tomorrow. Unfortunately, I've been battling a bladder infection and attempting to go without antibiotics. However, I realized this afternoon that I can't, um, that I can't hope that it goes away any longer as I drink gallons of water. It simply isn't, and in fact, it is getting much worse. My question is, is this, assuming I have no choice to start antibiotics today, uh, should I wait to start the cleanse until the antibiotics are over or should I go ahead with the cleanse anyways? So a great question. It's that time of year. Uh, everyone's getting sick. You know, there's a flu epidemic, which is it's ridiculous as far as I'm concerned. Um, here's, here's, here's what I think. Okay. First of all, two things. If you have a bladder infection, you should be drinking organic cranberry juice, at least 300 milliliters a day based on what the research shows to be a protective against urinary tract infections. Um, cranberry juice has specific compounds, antioxidants and different uh, phytonutrients that inhibit E. coli and other bacteria from sticking 
to the cells in the urethra and the urinary tract. So cranberry juice is an absolute must uh, if you have, and, and it's not ocean spray cranberry juice, I'm talking about like organic, real cranberry juice, no sugar added, none of that stuff, okay? So that's the first thing you need to be doing if you have a history or if you're currently, you know, fighting that. Secondly, should you start our cleanse? Um, absolutely. Even if you're on antibiotics, here's the thing, okay? Because our cleanse is really about food. It's just about eating healthier, it's food-based. And what that's going to do is that's going to actually help your body, you know, battle the cold, battle the flu, battle, you know, the infection. And what's the alternative anyway? So, I mean, if you don't do our cleanse and you're not eating healthy, what are you doing? I mean, are you going to go to McDonald's and having Subway and stuff like that as an alternative? Uh, I would hope not. So there's nothing wrong with starting the cleanse while you're on antibiotics. It'll probably actually help the whole thing. The one thing you want to consider as well with antibiotics is that you want to up your dose of probiotics because antibiotics are like atomic bombs inside your body. They will rip apart all the bacteria, good and bad. So you need to replenish the good bacteria in as soon as possible. And some people say wait until the antibiotics are over and then replenish with the probiotics. I would just say replenish with probiotics every single day anyways because um, I have a how quickly the bad bacteria and yeast can grow out of control when they're unchecked by the good bacteria, okay? So if you're using antibiotics, I would first of all not even recommend you use them, but I'm not your doctor, so you know, do what your doctor says. But if you can, uh, in combination of, of using cranberry juice, probiotics, and then obviously following the healthy uh, the cleanse phase that we have in the total wellness cleanse, you'll be completely fine. So I think all three of those will really help out. All right, so a third question. Uh, it's actually regarding the cleanse as well. Uh, this is actually very, very applicable to a lot of people because it basically has to do with gouts and, and purines and stuff. So uh, this comes from Jill. Hey, you're going to need your help. I posted a question on Facebook yesterday. No one answered. Uh, sorry about that. Things are pretty crazy, but I'm experiencing gouts and cannot figure out what the underlying cause is. I'm not overweight, don't drink alcohol, not a huge meat eater, etc. I'm practically living on salads right now. I need to detox, but the list of foods to avoid is extensive besides meat. Many of these are on the cleanse. I'm half afraid to put anything in my mouth when it flares up, I can barely walk. Okay, well, first of all, Jill, I understand uh, gout is not a fun condition to deal with. Um, let me just let me just basically take you through what gout is, okay? So uh, for those of you who don't know, it's basically crystallization of uric acid, uh, which due to gravity tend to accumulate in the big toe. So that's generally where it, you know, it kind of accumulates. It's kind of like, it's actually very similar to kidney stones, but in your big toe. So that's essentially what gout is. And gout is, uh, because it's coming from uric acid, uh, uric acid is the ultimate breakdown product of protein, okay? So that's why a lot of meat is not only high in protein, but it's also um, a precursor for purines. And purines is, um, uh, uric acid is one of the breakdowns of purines. So you wanna avoid any kind of purine-based foods, which would namely be alcohol, meat, and those are the big ones. I'm just actually gonna I'm gonna read you off a list here of foods that are very high and moderately high in purines. Okay, so anchovies, brains, so like brain, gravies, kidneys, liver, sardines, and sweet breads, asparagus. That's one veggie. Okay, bacon, beef, bluefish, calf tongue, carp, cauliflower. That's the second veggie. Uh, chicken, chicken soup, codfish, crab, duck, goose, a bunch of other animals. Kidney beans, lentils, mushrooms, and everything else is animal-based. Okay, so those are four, uh, five things that are on the cleanse, that are in the cleanse. So let me just repeat those. Asparagus, kidney beans, lentils, and mushrooms. Four things. They're not even that big of a deal. They're not even that common um, in terms of foods that we use in the cleanse, but they are present in a couple of the recipes. So to answer a question here, um, I'm not really too sure which foods you're referring to because other than the ones I just listed and alcohol, um, there's really other, there's really other, you know, there's no other issues with the foods that you're going to be, you know, enjoying during the Total Wellness Cleanse. Um, so anyways, if you're watching the video, if you're reading the blog post, uh, just let me know below and, uh, and, and I'm sure we can, you know, figure something out. But nonetheless, I mean... Um, you know, I don't know why the gout has come up. You know, I don't know if there's a genetic predisposition or if there's something else. Uh, but that's, you know, something you want to pro you know, probably talk about with your doctor. But as far as I'm concerned in terms of the experience of working with people who've gone through our cleanse, who've had issues with kidney stones, with gouts, uh, different types of things like that, 
um, there shouldn't be a problem. We actually had one person, I think, who actually responded to this post in our Facebook group who said that they had a history of gout um, several years ago and their diets was, was very high in processed foods and not even that much meat. So there's a lot of things in processed foods that we're not even aware of that can be affecting us on a negative level. So anyways, hopefully those answers help you out. Um, and again, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, if you're on the blog, just put a comment in the blog section. If you want to join me on Facebook, you can post questions there. I, I can't promise that I'm answering all the questions, but I will do my best every single week to answer several uh, questions that I feel will be uh, relevant to, to as many people as possible. So, so that's all for today. Hope you have a great Friday. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.